M. Bach just picked up his master's degree. That's what yep. I read in, I think, one of yep. your articles. Yep. Um, he's got a decision to make, too. Um, he said he'd like to come back and play. And he likes Fort Wayne because it's close enough to his family in Chicago that they can come visit whenever they want. And he really likes that part of it. So I would think he would be a guy who would like to come back, and I think the Comets would like to have him back. Meisner, Summerhays. I think I, you'd be great to start off with those two. Right. Do you think there's a good chance that both of them are back? I think it's worth a shot. I think both of them will probably get AHL training camp possibilities. And, you know, why not? I mean, I would start with those two. Fine. You think that's who the Comets should target right well, off the bat? I think the they'll try to, yeah. But, again, you don't know because both of them have agents. Both of them are going to want to push to go to the AHL. It's just, yeah. This isn't like the CHL where you can sign 12 guys and know, okay, they're going to camp. But we know they're coming back. Well, the funny thing is you, you can't count on that. At this point last year, we were like, oh, yeah, hey, they got Cody Reichert. Hey, John Muse. Muse played in the first game, and then right. we didn't see him the rest of the year. Right. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen specifically, you, you I think, from know. a goalie pos position well, standpoint. And, and, you know, look at uh, Jordan Southorn. I mean, there's a guy, he, he's 23, he's talked a little bit about retiring if he doesn't move up. I mean, you know, these guys are in it strictly to move up, and it's like, how do you convince people that that's the actual case? They're not here to settle down and, and raise families here and that kind of thing like they were in the CHL and the UHL days. Transitioning from the players into a more general sphere regarding the Comets, uh, the Frankies have said when they hired Gary Graham that they had a two-year plan. We've got one year in the books. Obviously, it was a successful season to a certain degree. They get back in the they get in the playoffs for the first time yeah. in ECA. They do well in the ECA too. Yeah, um, knock off the number one seed, the reigning champ. What's year two? What is the plan for year two? Well, I, I think it'll be easier. I mean, as much as we've talked about all the things that might happen with the current players, it actually might be easier for the Comets to really build in year two because now they have a reputation. They proved that it worked. They were able in the second half to turn things around and have a really good product. And then they were able to beat a number one seed. And then they were 2-2 with Cincinnati, which might end up going on to win. You know, So they might end up being the toughest test Cincinnati could face in the playoffs. We'll find out. So at least there's a little bit of a background there to say, okay, here's what we were trying to do, and it worked when we finally got everybody to buy in. And then you can you can go out and sell that a lot easier. You can say that, Several guys got call-ups, even though we're an independent, and we're fine with that, and, and we'll help you with that. And plus, we're an independent. You can actually get to know everybody, too, a little bit, and we can help you improve as a player. Gary Graham really got out. As soon as he was hired, he was out there scouting players, talking to agents. He got the jump on a lot of guys, I feel like, in the last offseason, and they brought a lot of known veteran quantities, I think, into camp, even though they ended up cutting some of those guys. Right. Uh, how is this offseason different? Because as you mentioned, the guys are in it for themselves. Gary becomes more of a known commodity. We know what the Comets can do now getting in the playoffs, but also there's that lack of an NHL affiliation. Those guys want to be guaranteed the opportunity to move up to the well, NHL. Well, how did he do it last year? How, what specific area did he target? He targeted the West Coast because there's fewer AHL teams out there. There's three, I think, three or four or five. Not very many compared to the now six teams out there. So those players didn't get as much chance to move up. Well, he sold that, hey, we're right in the middle of all these AHL teams. You will get looked at. You will get the chance to move up. He can do that again. But I think he'll move a little slower this time because he'll really try to check out the character of the guys. Is this guy actually going to fit in? Is this guy just going to be a, a cancer? Is like, why didn't, why didn't his other team re-sign him? You know, um, I know he's, I know, I'm sure he's already started talking to agents. He'd be crazy not to, and Gary's not crazy that way. You know, I'm sure he's already talked to five, six, seven agents that he's worked with in the past to try to say, well, keep us in mind, see what your list looks like, you know, let us know. Um, and I know he's going to talk to all the, the guys this week, too, to see what their interest is and that kind of thing, too. So, I mean, they're already working on it. Now, last year, they had those 50 extra days. You know, 50 extra days when they weren't mm -hmm. playing to get started. This year they don't have that. So I have a feeling that they're going to have a protected list of, I think it's eight guys, and then you can maybe sign one or two others, okay? So you've already got a base, maybe. And then you, you, have, a, you have a little bit more time to really study and see, what do I know about these other guys? Plus, last year they had two players. 
They had Marino, and they had Schrock that he could say, do you guys know with any of these guys? Now he's going to have eight guys that he can say, somebody surely has got to know this guy that we're looking to bring in. What do you know about him? Is he a good guy? Can he work here? Is he a bad apple? What? You know, now he's got a base to work from. So your expectations are higher. Definitely. Th for I, this offseason. If we have to go through the same crap next year with all the constant turnover of guys not wanting to be here, not buying in, well, then they didn't learn anything this year. And I think they learned a, a great deal this year. I really do. I think they've learned, you know, there are eight, nine guys we know we can count on who are who buy into what we're trying to do. That They didn't have that at the start of the year. They didn't know. Nobody knew except for Marino and Schrock and, and Oj coming back, even Oj coming back from an injury. You didn't know. You hoped, but you didn't know. Next year they can go in with nine, ten guys they know. All right, so that is a good place to build. Uh, to wrap things up, your impression overall of this 2013-2014 season, what's your takeaway in general from this Comets season as we look f towards the next year? I don't think it was a great year. Um, I don't think it was a bad year. It was an interesting year. There was something happening every week. Every week there was something. And it didn't translate into the wins as much, but I think we all learned a great deal about the ECHL and and what it what it's like, what it takes. This was the Comets' first playoff run in the ECHL. That was different from other leagues that they'd been in. Um, it had some similarities, but it was it was not the hitting in the playoffs at all. Like there wasn't a Central League or the old IHL or the UHL. It just wasn't. The, the intensity was different. It was it's it's a skating 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 league, and but it's all different. It was very much. It was just a different thing to get used to. I mean, I think the Comets got about as far as they could have, uh, considering all the changes they'd been under. I mean, to be 2-2 with Cincinnati was pretty impressive when you look at how well Cincinnati finished. Yeah, definitely. So a lot to build on, not only from a coaching perspective. Gary Graham got better as the season went along. They figured out how players are going to interact with each other, how to build a team. I, I really think it was a positive season. I think you, they you, did you, know, a, you wrote an interesting article about how – a lot of people don't view it as a successful season unless they win a championship. I don't know that that's the case. You know what I'm saying? I think this was a good season to build on. I, I, I think I, I thought about that a lot before I wrote it because a lot of people didn't look at the home record and say, well, that was a lousy season. And to them, I can totally understand and sympathize and empathize. I mean, they paid money to see wins. They want to be entertained, and that wasn't always the case. Now, the last two months in the playoffs, you could kind of argue that was it was a much better product, okay? But that doesn't mean they can afford to go through another first half next year like they did this year. They have to prove that they have made strides. All right. Well, we'll be talking about that next season. And, of course, we appreciate, Blake, you know, coming in and taking your time every Monday to talk Comets no hockey with us. Uh, you forget more walking in. <laughs> to the station about the comments than I'll ever know. Oh, believe me, I forget a lot. So I appreciate your expertise. I just get to ask the questions. You have all the answers. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, right. Hopefully we'll be doing it again next year here on Wayne.com. Well, Blake, we definitely appreciate the time. And we'll see you next season talking comments. Thanks, hockey. bud. Thank you.